On today's episode, we are going to take a look at Workhorse, ticker WKHS. They just reported earnings today and they're up 10% for the day. Um, so on today's episode, it's going to be broken down to the following. First, we're just going to do a quick overview of Workhorse. Then we're going to take a look at their earnings, some of their financial numbers, some highlights that came out this earnings. And at the end, I'm going to end up with my thoughts. Like always, my name is Jose Naharo by day. I'm a senior electrical engineer. By night, I'm a self-taught investor, and you guys can check out the merch down below. Remember, none of this should be taken as advice as I am not a professional. Like always, if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the thumbs up. It helps the channel out so much, and I truly, truly appreciate it. Before we go any further, go down to the comments and let me know what are your thoughts on Workhorse and how do you think their earnings went? And while you're down there, you should also see a link to my Discord channel. It's free to anybody that wants to join. We have over a thousand members there. Um, and like I said, it's free. I post every time I buy and sell a stock. And while you're down there, you should also see a link to Weibo. If you sign up and follow that link, we both could get a free stock. Sometimes they even do specials. We might get two or three free stocks. All right. So like I mentioned, we're taking a look at Workhorse Group, ticker WKHS. It's sitting at $18.96 right now. And it's up 10%, almost 10% for the day after reporting earnings. It has a market cap right now of about $2 billion, $1.99 to be exact. And the stock price right now, year-to-date returns have provided 517% to investors. So congratulations to anybody who picked up with those returns. But unfortunately, from its all-time highs, it is down 38%. So we can see there's definitely some people that bought up top, hoping the best for you guys. Um, so today's episode, like I said, we're going to do a little more on their earnings. All right, so next, I want to take a look at some technical analysis for Workhorse. Uh, like I mentioned, I'm more of a long-term investor, so technicals is very, very low on the list when I look at things, but it's still something that I, I feel a lot of my viewers take a look at. So one thing I do want to mention is one of my, I, I use volume profile indicator, which gives me at what stock price is this company seeing the most volume. And this helps me find support levels just based on where the volume is at. So we can see when I previously did my last episode on Workhorse, we saw that volume was pretty big around that mid $15. And that's where the stock price was at at that point. Um, so we can see that support was pretty held up pretty strong. Then the second big chunk of volume we have here around the 20 levels. And it's just sometimes that might create some form of resistance as well. We can see it hit its head here, here, and here, and kind of today as well. So now let's get into their earnings. One of the most important news that happened for Workhorse is today they announced that they received a purchase order of about 500 C100, C1000, which is their all electric delivery trucks from Pritchard companies for their national fleet program with both inventory and finance program being provided by Hitachi's Capital America. So I do believe this is probably one of the major reasons the stock price is up right now. So let's take a look at some highlights for the quarter. So the first thing is Workhorse quarter three did show a net loss of $84 million. That is definitely a huge loss. And we're going to learn a little bit more about that later on. Their revenue was $565,000. Let me say that again, $565,000. And this missed expectation by by $1.25 million dollars so analysts were expecting a lot more from workhorse but this is still compared to four thousand dollars of revenue last quarter so we can see investors i can tell by this type of revenue that we're seeing imagine revenue of five hundred and sixty five thousand dollars is very very small so investors are buying here for it pretty much seems like i want to say i want to say speculative play if they get a lot of these contracts if they get a lot more sales obviously they would get a lot more revenue but right now how things are looking so a few things they do mention out of that five hundred and sixty five thousand dollars of revenue that they made cost of goods sales were about 2.8 million dollars and that increased compared to 1.4 million dollars in the same quarter last year they do mention this increase was primarily driven by the increase of labor and materials in relations to cost of c-series production so right now as they are building these c1000 trucks obviously they need more manpower they need more labor they need more materials to build them so this is where they're saying this cost of goods has increased so like I mentioned, right, they did take a net loss of $84.1 million. And this is compared to the same time last year, which was $11.5 million. But one of the biggest reasons for this loss was of uh, interest expense due to some fair value change on companies' convertible notes. 
um, and while it's the loss on it while it's conversion to to stock price so obviously that that took a huge chunk and that's where they're saying most of their losses are coming from so workhorse believes that it's better to really see how the company is doing by looking at the operating income and by looking at the cash performance due to their balance sheet this operating income was a loss of 9.8 million compared to a loss of 5.6 million a year ago so we can see there's still losses but when taking a look at more of that operating income of 9.8 compared to 5.6 a year ago um it's, it's a lot different than looking at total net loss of 84.1 million to 11.5 million a year ago so we can they, they, that's why they believe it's better to just look at operating income as of september 30th of 2020 the company had about 80.2 million dollars in quick cash compared to 23.9 a year ago so they did increase their cash av availability by almost four times compared to the same time last year so they they are building the cash and after the quarter ended the company actually entered into a more financial deals where they picked up they did more convertible notes and they picked up an extra 200 million dollars with one of the convertible notes that they had they ended up transforming all those notes into shares instead of paying back the instead of paying back those notes and now the company has about 260 million dollars in cash this is actually very impressive right now that they it's impressive at this it's kind of impressive right right now we see that they are taking a big loss right now so it is important for them to have heavy cash with them and that's what they're doing now let's take a look at some important data that management did on this earnings the first thing was obviously this 500 truck order from pritchard auto company they say this is important and it, it's it's an opening door for many more orders to come previously the ceo mentioned that by the end of this of 2020 they were going to produce about 300 to 400 vehicles and mostly worse most of them were expected to be made in the fourth quarter right now they still believe that they're going to manufacture a few vehicles in quarter four but it would be a lot lower than what they previously guided and it's not for any real business negative reasons they're mentioning they're trying to help investors know that the main reason for this decrease in guidance is one their primary battery supplier is not able to meet the volumes due to capacity issues and covid related slowdowns and then also covid itself has kind of reduced the overall production related staff of workhorse by about 36 percent. so that's also limiting some of that production as well they do kind of want to reassure investors and they mentioned that even though these delays are in progress they've introduced several new battery supplier options in their supply chain and will have supplement volume additions in the first quarter of 2021 um so again right they're saying hey we have a slowdown right now our our main supplier is not able to produce everything we need but for the upcoming quarter we'll be able we have more suppliers coming in so that shows me one thing um it kind of gives me a few understanding of how management is doing first they're willing to tell you hey yes we're, we messed up right now with our projected numbers these are the problems and this is how we're solving it so just by reading this it kind of gives a, a bullish sentiment to workhorse and they're a management company from what i'm reading right now and let me just say this right now i have no position in workhorse i honestly just enjoy looking at different earnings and understanding how the company reacts and what they do but like i said yeah definitely no position that at the moment i still don't think i'm going to open one all right next let's take a look at some financial numbers for workhorse but before we continue um you guys should see a link down below for seven investing where every month they recommend seven stocks for 17 dollars a month but if you use my link or my promo code jose j-o-s-e you get ten dollars off your first month and may i say yes this is an affiliate program but i use their services and would recommend it to anyone now let's go back to workhorse and here we can see future growth for workhorse is expected to be a monster we can see revenue right now is very very low but analysts are expecting much growth for this company i can see this is what investors are buying for this expectation of growth i myself am a growth investor and i like investing in companies that are are expecting to see growth but right now for me sometimes it's okay to be not too early into the game and that's where i'm feeling workhorse for me Right now it seems it's a little bit too early for me to enter even if i missed out some of the gains i would rather see how the company plays out obviously doing that right now you have a better risk and return um, you have better you have higher risk but with those higher risk you have also higher returns 
I would probably I would enjoy it where there would be a little bit more vehicles out right now, a little more contracts, and see the company continue to grow from there. But analysts are expecting revenue to grow 68.4% annually on average for the next three to five years. And, and that's pretty impressive. And they are also expecting it to be profitable by the end, by the beginning of 2023. Next, I want to take a look at this company's debt. We already know much about its balance sheet uh, in form of assets. They have about right now $280 million uh, of quick cash available to them. So with that $280 million of cash right now that they have, they'll be able to pretty much pay off their total debt. So this shows me that, hey, even though they're not profitable, they have a decent balance sheet. I, I wouldn't consider it a, tr a strong, strong balance sheet, but it's definitely one that would allow them to continue their projects for at least a next year. And obviously now that they are a public company, they can just keep doing um, secure notes. They could do dilutions to continue to build that equity up. But I really want to take a look at their net cash flow, at their cash flow statement. So net cash flow from operating activities this most recent quarter was a burn of about $37 million. So that's how much cash they're burning on their everyday business. $37 million burning, right? So imagine if they didn't get money. Most of their money is actually coming from financing activities, which is due to, for example, convertible notes or dilution. But assuming this $37 million of cash burning, and if they continue like this, in theory, they can last maybe six, seven quarters with this type of burning. So as an investor, one thing to really keep an eye out is this net cash flow used in operating activities and see how it's improving over the quarters. And one should really see an improvement. That's what investors should really keep an eye out. And I do believe maybe with that 500 order of that C1000 vehicle, it could end up helping this net cash flow from operating activities. Now I'm going to just give my thoughts on the overall business right now, a forward price to sales ratio right now of 95. And we can see this heavy growth that analysts are expecting this company to grow from 95 this year to the end of next year, it goes down to 13.11. Forward price to sales ratio of 13.11 doesn't seem horrible. I know I did an episode previously on a few EV stocks and I kind of put all these in, in line with each other and 13.1 um, was kind of around the level where most of these others were sitting at. Uh, so it doesn't seem like it's completely overvalued or undervalued in regards to the other market. Right now, Workhorse for me personally, it's not a company I would buy, but again, that's not for any bearish reasons. Every investor understand their, understands should understand their risk tolerance levels. This, I believe, it's for me, right? For me, it could be different for me. It's a little too early for when I normally start investing. Like I said, I don't mind missing out on some of the gains, but I'd rather see a little more, a little more strength in the business before I go in and invest. Even right, because even if you're a few sectors, a few quarters late. A growth company will continue to grow from there on and then the returns from there can still continue but for me i'm waiting a bit so i hope you guys enjoyed the episode like always make sure to hit the thumbs up make sure to hit the um subscribe button and take care guys have a good night and see you next time